Dune Part 1 is the new sci-fi movie from Denis Villeneuve. It's based on the novels of Frank Herbert, and this movie only covers the first half of the first book. This story is huge, so hold on to your butts. It's gonna get nerdy. The story of Dune is set in the year 10191. Duke Leto Atreides of House Atreides is tasked by the Emperor to take over the desert planet Arrakis, also known as Dune, to oversee the Spice operation. Now Spice is the most valuable substance in the galaxy and it's many things. Mainly a consciousness expanding drug, but it's also fuel for interstellar travel and Arrakis is the only planet that has it. But since his rival's House Harkonnen has successfully overseen the operations for decades, Duke Leto senses that something must be rotten in Denmark. Meanwhile, his son Paul is having visions of things to come. Paul's mother, Lady Jessica, is a member of the Bene Gesserit, and these are highly trained, highly capable, but very dangerous women. And she's been training Paul because there are signs he might just be the chosen one. And that's not even the half of it. If you're not familiar with the story of Dune, it has a lot of plot. It's layers upon layers of plot. And that's just one of the reasons Dune was always considered to be an unfilmable movie because it's just so big. In the 1970s, director Alejandro Jodorowsky tried to make it into a 14 hour movie. If you ever watched the wonderful documentary Jodorowsky's Dune, you know how ambitious his plan was. I wanted to make something sacred free, with new perspective, open the mind. He had all these amazing people involved with the movie, like uh, Pink Floyd, uh, Mobius, uh, Salvador Dali, Orson Welles, H.R. Giger, uh, and Dan O'Bannon, the special effects artist from Space Odyssey. But of course, because of studio execs, it never saw the light of day. And then we had the David Lynch movie in 1984, produced by Dino De Laurentiis. And David Lynch's Dune was... Extremely fascinating, but very boring at the same time. I mean, he nailed the look of the film, but it had so much lore crammed into it. And if you've never read Frank Herbert's novels, it can, it's a chore to get through, especially with the whispering inner monologue every two minutes. And yeah, I know it's in the book, but it doesn't translate well onto a movie. Spice, there's the imperial condition. I feel for no one. You can hide information dumps in chapters of a book. In a movie, it stands out. After that, there were also two made-for-TV miniseries in the early 2000s, but they were very low budget. And that's why I'm so glad this movie is split into two. It's just too big for one film. But Frank Herbert didn't buy into the superhero myth. So the ending of part one might be a little misleading to people who haven't read the book, and it doesn't exactly end on this amazing cliffhanger. But other than that, everything was grand. I don't like to use the word epic because I just don't, but in this case it absolutely fits, especially the cinematography, which is just as pleasing to look at as Gwyneth Paltrow's belly button. Denis Villeneuve shot a lot of the effects in camera with actual built sets, and that makes this world feel lived in, like you're walking into a world that has a rich history. And just like Blade Runner 2047, the production design alone is so gorgeous and it definitely helps in the world building. Casting Timothy Chalamet as Paul was a good call. He fits the character perfectly. And I know we've seen this archetype many times before, but he was really compelling. But I was most impressed by Rebecca Ferguson, who plays Lady J. Jessica. Ferguson was exactly like I pictured Jessica when I first read the book. Not so much her appearance, although she's very sexy, but it's her intensity that sold me on her character. The Bene Gesserit can do certain things that I can't get into without spoiling anything, just know that they're super badass. For example, they won the war against the machines. The, the Bene Gesserit basically defeated Skynet. And don't worry, it's not in this movie, it, this takes place long before Dune. And it's never explained in this film, but that's the reason why you don't see any androids in this universe. Because remember, this is 8,000 years into the future, and something called the Batlarian Jihad has already happened. And that's one of the things I loved and this movie did really well. Herbert liked dropping in these little hints into his books, where you kind of have to figure it out as you go along. And this movie has these little details that aren't explained and have very specific reasons behind them. But it's never jarring or confusing, even if you don't know all the lore. This movie shows you little things, those little details, but doesn't explain it to you, but you immediately understand the concept uh, without 
uh, whispering inner monologue. Uh, again, it's very nerdy, it's very sci-fi, but I love this shit. That's not to say this movie doesn't have any expository scenes. It most certainly does, especially in the first hour. But I never felt it was overbearing and the movie never talks down to you. And Dune has a great cast. Oscar Isaac is great in any movie, but the actor that surprised me the most was Jason Momoa, who plays the warrior Duncan Idaho. He's the only one who lightens the mood a little when he's on screen because everyone else is real heavy. So Momoa breaks up the, the broodiness of it all. Is that a word? Okay. The only gripe I had is that this movie is PG-13. So whenever there's a brutally violent scene, the camera just cuts away. It doesn't make the movie any less enjoyable, but I don't mind a little gore in my films. Or nudity, for that matter. If you're planning on seeing this, do yourself a favor and watch it in IMAX. Unless you have a 30 foot widescreen in your living room, watching this at home would be like trying to chop down a tree with a rubber dildo. This needs to be seen in a movie theater. But there is a TV series about the Bene Gesserit coming next year. Denis Villeneuve is a masterful filmmaker and for me this was an adaptation worthy of Frank Herbert's novel. And I hope it does well at the box office so we get to see a part 2. Because remember, Blade Runner 2047, which was one of the best movies of 2017, did not do well financially. So I don't recommend watching Dune at home, but watch it on the biggest screen you can find because this movie is, yeah, yeah, it's epic. Oh, by the way, uh, I know it's been slow, but I'm seeing a lot more press screenings this fall, so expect a lot more reviews. And you know how the old saying goes, that at summen morkast in gaan Groningen. I don't know what that means. I think it's Scandinavian.